lobby in front. Jess, we kind of knew it was going to be a, a tough battle between you and Sedona. That was kind of what everybody was keying on, and it was. Y'all kind of, like his coach said, y'all kind of neutralized each other at times. What was it like going head to head to her with her, and also, you know, how did you feel like you finished the ball game with that uh, eight points in the fourth quarter? Um, it was really great. It was a fun game today. Just playing against someone like that. I haven't really played against no one her size or like her length or whatever this whole season. So just having that matchup, it was like just preparing me for the pros. I feel like she's a pro. She's an amazing player. Uh, she's amazing on the court. Um, just giving her her flowers. But I feel like we prepared each other tonight. Just giving the coaches and stuff a different look on the things we can do against each other. And as far as finishing the game now, I feel like I just gave my team what I could just to win the ball game. No matter if it was on defense or offense, I just did what I could to win. Lauren, I guess for y'all, you know, going off of that, you knew the, the tough matchup that Jess was going to have and, and the way she was able to play, I guess. What kind of gave you guys that continued confidence to, to go to her and know that, you know, she could close out the game the way that she did? Yeah, um, you know, Jess is our go-to player. I just been on Jess since the beginning of the season, so it didn't change when we came to Sedona. We were able to get the ball and, you know, play off of her and um, do what we best when we need. Nothing really new. Turn back. Lauren, uh, uh, what's this experience been like in the WBIT for, for you and this team these uh, these last two games? Yeah, um, I think it's been it's been pretty cool. Um, just having the opportunity to play in the postseason is always like a really big thing. Um, and I, this is like the first year for this tournament, and I think they did a really good job um, with like seating and like you know making sure like a lot of fans come out to um, like home fans come out to the game and stuff. So. I have a lot of friends who are playing in it right now that are also having good experiences, so it's pretty cool, especially getting to play at the house and stuff. Aaron, I think it was the first possession of the fourth quarter. You went straight to the rim, attacked, and, and scored right there. It, it seemed a lot like the Ole Miss game here where the post players just kind of taking over. What was the message coming into that quarter after it had gotten pretty tight? Um, Coach Sam said that we needed to go big and we needed to get the, to the rim. We were um, settling for a lot of three pointers, and we have great three point shot um, shooters, but you know they were they weren't falling. So he just told me and Jess to just go and lay down and get the ball. Stand here in the front. Jess, we, we obviously don't know if this is your last game here at the Hump, uh, but you know if, if it was, you know, your six years of program. What do you say about the way you've you know, left it all out there uh, here today for this team? Um, it was special just knowing that. Even though this was our last game here, we put it off with a win. I mean, it was a good crowd tonight. Shout out to our fans, best fans in the country, hands down. And just, I don't know, I've had fun. I mean, I don't want to cry because I get emotional, but I've had a lot of fun here. And I'm, I'm happy that we could win. Uh, this is for a new player. Um, the atmosphere in your city was amazing today. How much of a factor was it to have state fans here and just really cheering you guys on today? Um, for me, it was amazing because just like running out um, before the game, running out, the fans are there cheering for us. So it just gives us, gives us an extra boost. Like, okay, we got people here for us that want to see us do well. They're going to be here for us no matter what. So it was amazing. Step on here in the front. For Jess or Aaron or both of you, you know, we, we didn't see near you know, too much today, but you know, the Georgia Tech game and the seven minutes that she had today, she played – really well. How have you guys kind of seen her grow, the way she's battled against you guys in practice and kind of taken advantage of you know, the opportunities she's got the last couple of games? Um, I would say Nier has been having big practices, so I think it just translates to the games. And her younger call, she's always ready, and she's been playing with, like really big minutes in this tournament, so I'm very proud of her. Yeah, definitely, and I just feel like this is the future. Um, she's the future for Mississippi State, so just her getting out there, having no matter how many minutes, whether it's one, ten, no matter what she's doing, I feel like she's showing the people that, yeah, we have a future here. We have a post player, a strong post player. And me going against her, Aaron going against her, we're making each other better. Not only are we getting her better, but she's getting us better, and she's preparing us for something when it can be in just college basketball. Uh, Lauren, you're killing at five steals uh, as well as 15 points here in this game. Uh, obviously, she announced uh, earlier, earlier in the week about her coming back for next year. Uh, what's it been like just sort of having her by your side in the backcourt and uh, what's, what's she going to bring uh, as a leader in, uh, next year for you? Yeah, I think it's just been fun playing with her. Um, she, can get, she can score at will, so um, just having somebody like that on the court that you know on your right or left, um, especially as a point guard, it makes the game a lot easier for me. Um, coming here, 
playing with all these digital kids are going to be a lot easier. You know, you don't have to force shots. You don't have to do all that. Um, so, yeah. Lauren, after, you know, the tough end of the year that y'all had, and then obviously the disappointing news that y'all didn't get in the big tournament, I mean, what's your thoughts on how y'all attack these first two games and, you know, the last week or so of practice, too? Yeah, I think everybody was just, like, we all felt so comfortable up front because we've been here before in the big tournament. Obviously, that was the goal, but um, I think we just had to change our mindset. Um, definitely, because coming as WBIT, we didn't want to come here and like lose this tournament. Like that wasn't like that's not going to be a good look for us. So you know, we wanted to come out and we wanted to compete. That's what Sam said. It doesn't matter what you do, you have to come out and compete. And I think everybody just changed their mindset of just like finishing up the year as they did. First of all, what a game for women's basketball. Uh, you know, obviously for our fans to show up, thank you. Uh, for those who tuned in, uh, you, you know, you watched two teams that are highly competitive uh, that just have had an unbelievable season and, and unfortunately both of us aren't in the NCAA tournament. But uh, just shout out to Mark Campbell. Uh, that's a guy since I've been in this business from day one. Uh, he's been there right with me uh, at other schools and for him to get at TCU and have the season they've had. And uh, unfortunately he had some injuries, but he kept that group together. Uh, we knew it would be an absolute dogfight. We knew it'd be a 40-minute war, uh, and I'm just thankful we were the better team there at the end to pull it up. Charlie, you're in the front. I know they did 12 three-pointers, and that's kind of their game, but it seemed like the idea early was to pressure them and, and also keep them out of the paint, and y'all did a really good job of that. What did you think of how y'all executed defensively? Awesome. Uh, it was great. I mean, for us, you know, we always talk about being a four-quarter team. First quarter, us. Second quarter, them. And then... Thank God we were playing at home um, because, you know, when you look back in our season, that third quarter has been our season that we've had a collapse. Uh, and then they, you know, they, they went 17-10 on us. Uh, but, again, our fan base was everything. For them to have a spirit about them, it was like, no, we've seen you all year. Not tonight. <laughs> Not tonight. You know what I was saying on the sideline, too? Not tonight. <laughs> all right, for us to come out 22-16, man, uh, again, what, what a great game here at the home. Obviously, all eyes were on the battle between uh, Destiny Carter and Sedona Prince. Yeah. And, you know, you talked about Sedona uh, after the game on Thursday. Uh, what do you say about the way Des handled that match up? Seemed like he was able to mostly get the better of her. Yeah, yeah. I just think of respect. Obviously, I told y'all I recruited Sedona. What a great kid and a great, you know, great family. So uh, I was obviously I'm partial. I still think I have the best post player in the country, like you saw tonight. Uh, and then obviously, I see both of them being in the league. Right, uh, and again, I kind of said that was for the treat for our fans to come watch two two kids who I expect to be on our roster uh, this year. Uh, and then the coolest thing I don't think gets talked about, uh, especially body language, uh, they were beating each other up. And Jess falls down one time, and Sedona, you know, there, you see petty stuff at times. A kid can step over somebody or take advantage. What Sedona did, she picks Jess up. Then uh, it goes vice versa. Uh, Jess is, is hitting the crap out of Sedona falls down. And that's character, man. To have two future college kids that are absolutely playing their heart out and beating the crap out of each other, but have respect for each other in this game, uh, I had goosebumps because uh, they played the game the right way. And again, uh, I caught myself probably too much in that third quarter just enjoying it and not coaching. So, I kind of follow up on that. Jess played well, and Mir, even in yeah. the seven minutes she had played well. Um, you know, Jess was talking about the battles that her and Mir had, you know, in practice this season. How much? You kind of see that impact from Jess of, of obviously what she's done this season, but kind of how she set up Nier to kind of replace her going into next year. Yeah, there's no doubt Nier's the future. Um, so like you said, like the cool thing for Jess, uh, and I actually just tweeted this before I came making up this off, you know, congratulations to her for breaking the all-time uh, games played uh, here at Mississippi State, which, again, I've said it, uh, it is an awesome thing. Uh, but Jess has had a lot of big sisters during her time. Um, even her freshman year. So, again, this is Jess's character, which I love. For her to come full circle and pour into these freshmen, like she was poured into by Big T, um, it, it makes me, you know, chill bumps because that's what I want in the culture, and that's what I want here. So uh, she just pushes her. She tells her, don't put your head down. I know I'm getting 33 to, you know, 30 to 33 minutes, but when you come in there, you can make an impact. And I thought Nier was awesome. Uh, that huge baseline jump shot, but just wearing down on Sedona so then Jess could have her moment later in the game. Kind of a uh, two-parter here, but at first it was a very animated uh, meeting in the middle of the court. What were you what were you telling your team right after the uh, the game was over? Yeah, you know, I'm in that emotional stage, man. This is the best time of the year. I, I keep saying it, March Madness. I just want to enjoy it, man. We're, you know, uh, it's special. 
Uh, again, I've, I've, I've stated with Captain August, obviously we're disappointed uh, not being in the big dance, but we're in the little dance right now, all right? We're still dancing. Um, so just enjoy each other. This has been a great group to coach. We've had adversity thrown our, uh, at our way, but again, in a time uh, where teams are quitting, uh, teams don't want to follow through, we're proud to put on that uniform. We are proud to play in our fan base. Uh, and to think, you know, Moore Park Lane doesn't break the assist record if we don't play in that first game. Jessica Carter doesn't break the all-time games played if we don't play in the second game. Uh, there's still a lot of individual uh, opportunities for these young women, but most importantly, our team name gets back on the map that we're not dead, but we're still alive. Well, and the second part of that, you kind of fed into it a little bit there that, you know, just kind of about this team's mentality, because you mentioned obviously the NCAA tournament was the main goal, but how would you assess how your team's kind of uh, attacked this tournament mentally kind of so far, and how would you assess kind of where they're at? Yeah, I know you guys get tired of me, but uh, I, I see the team I had right before February. They're winners. I, you know, I've said it multiple times. i got dogs in that locker room. I'm proud to be their coach. Uh, you know, February is, is what it was, but we got healthy. Spring break in a time where kids want to go to the beach, uh, go on vacation, my kids got to get together. And that's the best thing that could ever happen for a head coach, uh, that they love the game, and I love it too. So let, if we're going to put all this work in, then let's come out and let, let's put on a performance. And I think our fan base has seen the team that they were accustomed to, uh, that's prideful, and most importantly, the present's br really bright, but the future is too. Probably here in the front. Jerk it up to that uh, great start, and then went to the tunnel a couple of times. Was she dealing with something today? Right, she told me, she, she, I guess she ate something too bad. I'm, I'm in charge of breakfast club with her now because she had to throw something up. So I said, everybody else on the team feel good? And they said, yes. And I said, it wasn't the food, jerk. I don't know what she did. But again, that's that kid. Uh, the Ole Miss game I referenced, that Ole Miss, she was under the weather and she fought for me. This game, she was under the weather. And I keep looking at her, I'm like, hey, you good? And she's like, you know it. And I was like, you're such a warrior. I love you. All right. And then at the end of the game there, to go one four flat and her make a Jacayla Jordan move, I, I mean, it's just the kid's special. We don't know, obviously, if this was uh, the last game here at the Hump for players like Jess and Lauren and Aaron. Uh, but if so, obviously, you know, what do you have to say about the school, the way they left everything out there here today? Oh, man, proud coach. Proud coach. Because, again, this fan base is one of the top of the country. Um, I know I got the mic twice now because we thanked him on senior night, and then we thanked him again. I hope I get to thank him again on uh, next Thursday. Uh, but, but just again, in a time and an era where kids transfer, it doesn't work out, right? I think for us to have how many wins now? 22? We're 23. That's one more than we had last year, right? It's a statement that we keep on growing the program, right? We were 22 wins last year. We're 23, is that correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're this year. Um, and then for them to have uh, individual awards along with team success, uh, they left their mark, but we're not done. I don't want to send them off yet because we still got great games ahead of us. And then here's the thing, if you keep advancing, then you got national exposure. And the cool thing about playing in this tournament is there's only so many games left, right, on the men and women's side. So in the NIT, or the, the WBIT, excuse me, um, if we make it to that Final Four, we're on ESPN 2, is that correct, twice? If we make it to the championship game, all right? Um, I've been working hard on the portal and on, on the film, so I apologize for some of these questions I'm kind of answering. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's a great chance where our team gets to be on national television. It's huge for recruiting, but also these young women deserve to cut down the net. I don't care what tournament it is. Let's try to get there and make it happen. Football here in front. To follow up on that, you know, Martha was just talking about how difficult it is kind of doing two jobs at once now with you know, recruiting and, and preparing for these games. I guess how, how have you and your staff handled that, you know, preparing for the WNIT, but also you know, having the portal open? And losing to Coach DeMercia, right? Uh, yeah, no, it's a blessing. First of all, I want to shout out to Michelle Carcart again. Thank her, because uh, obviously I didn't get a chance. We were hoping that release would come out before the last game. Um, and, and again, that's what I want here in my program. I want to be able to have a program where everybody can eat, whether players getting professional opportunities, obviously getting their degrees, the coaching staff members can leave and go on and get head coaching jobs. Uh, her spirit was unbelievable, and she would be missed. Um, and then, um, back to the question, sorry, because I want to talk about Michelle. Portal and WNIT. Yeah, so how do my eyes look right now? <laughs> Pretty bad, Great. right? Thank God my wife back there in the back. She is my eye care queen. <laughs> All right, so in the NIL gener uh, generation, I'm, I'm, I'm plugging some out today. What's a company? What's the company? Do we know? Multiple. Uh, multiple. <laughs> All right, male cream eye care. Okay, let's tweak that out. If there's somebody who wants to pick me up for March Madness, I'm happy to take it because these are eyes are barking. 
Okay, they're tired. We're finding a way. My kids are hugging me. Reagan over there is jumping in the morning saying, Dad, come on, win. Play. I want you to team to play like LSU. All right, the LSU game. She's still happy about that. She wants her pull. So we're all spirits. We're trying to find a way. And then again, when you love a job, you feel like you're never working. Um, to talk to kids and recruits right now about what we got going on is exciting. Um, so it's fun phone calls. Um, that they like what we're doing down here. And then it's obviously identifying the right kids when they come to us. Thanks, everybody. Thanks,